Hi, I'm Bill Simone, founder and owner of Healthy Basement Systems. I am proud to introduce our newest project called Contractors United Podcast. Contractors United will cover every aspect of the home improvement industry and every service from roofing to basements and everything in between. Healthy Basement Systems has been serving Long Island since 2004 by providing services such as basement remodeling, basement waterproofing, crawl space environment, mold prevention, and foundation repairs. Along the way, we have built relationships with knowledgeable professionals that we associate and work with. We all can learn from one another, and Healthy Basement Systems has the opportunity to share this information to all of you that are interested. We are excited and honored to launch this new podcast with my good friend, Larry Janeski, as our first guest. Larry Janeski owns Basement Systems, and since I met Larry in 2004, he has expanded his home improvement services and developed Contractor Nation, which we are proud to be associated with. Contractors United would not be possible without the planning and the help of the team of James, Menely, and Kenny, and Samuel. With that being said, enjoy the show and welcome Larry Janeski. All right, so today we have Larry Janeski. He is um, from Connecticut. He also created Basement Systems and Contractor Nation. Uh, Larry, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your companies? Okay, sure. Um, so I started in 1982 as a self-employed carpenter, and uh, today we have uh, Contractor Nation, which is a group of dealer networks, uh, contractor dealer networks in various uh, services. So basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, basement finishing, home energy conservation, roofing, gutters, uh, and so forth. And uh, so what is a dealer network? Well, they're uh, independent contractors all over North America who we support with uh, marketing support, sales support. Uh, they use our products. They're actually dealers of our products. We have uh, 32 different patented products and many other specialty products that we distribute. And we support them with production training and service uh, training and uh, basically everything they need to be very successful. So uh, Contractor Nation, uh, we started out as Basement Systems. And as we added other dealer networks, we had to come up with a name that uh, was more appropriate to really any service uh, in home improvement and servicing homeowners, uh, home improvement, home repair. Uh, so Contractor Nation fit the bill. Awesome. So when you started Basement Systems, how did you come up with developing the products? Well, um, when I started in um, 1987 in the basement waterproofing business, I realized, hey, there's not a lot of innovation here. There's not a lot of, uh, uh, you know, not a lot of thinking went into how can we do this better. So I said, you know, here's a place that uh, we could really make our mark. So I started uh, reinventing the products such as sump pumps and drainage systems. Um, and there's a lot to it, actually. You know, people think, oh, what's a sump pump, you know. But, hey, somebody's got to be the best in the world at everything. And uh, we are the best in the world at what we do uh, based on, you know, just really sitting back and thinking about, well, what does the homeowner really want, you know, uh, I think all the other companies that were operating in the business when I started were thinking about, let me fix a leak. And I said, you know, there's something more to it. And what we realized is people want dry usable space. You know, you say, well, why do you want to fix a leak? Well, because I want reliably dry, usable, mold-free space. That's what I really want. And so, oh, okay. Well, that, that requires more than just fixing a leak. And, you know, that's where we approached uh all the product development from. Awesome. So when you were developing the, uh, the systems, how many prototypes did it take you to finally get the right system, you know, perfect, complete system that will keep everyone's basement dry? How do you, how many times around did it take you to finally get the perfect system? Well, it depends on the, the product that you're talking about, you know, like uh, the drainage system, 
that we use today, um, we it's probably the th- fourth iteration of different approaches. And um, actually, the third one was very successful. It's just that people didn't get it. So we had to design it in a way that people would get it. And, uh, and it did the exact same thing. But uh, uh, yes, and, and, and other things, we got it right the first shot. You know, um, other things like our complete sump pump system, for example, you know, you, you add things to it, you change the, you know, the dimensions, the color, the shape, the, the, you know, one component and then another component and, you know, and you wind up with a, you know, a different kind of cake, right. With different (laughs) ingredients in it. So, uh, it's, it's just really depends. There's so many things that we, we deal with, uh, in a basement to take, uh, Something that really wasn't built right in the first place and uh, transform it into dry, reliably dry, usable space. Uh, there can be a lot to it. So we, we deal in drainage systems and sump pump systems and discharge lines from those sump pump systems, battery-operated backup sump pump systems when the power goes out, and wall paneling systems and window systems and window well systems and and drains for across a, an exterior doorway and uh, flooring systems. And, you know, there, there can be a lot to it, depending on what the standard that the homeowner wants to bring their basement up to. Um, with the, all these products that you have, how many of them do you have patented? Uh, we have 32 different patents. And you own all of them? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, so when starting up this company, did you find any parts that were difficult, any setbacks and how did you overcome any of those issues? Well, you know, if, if you're doing your job right as the leader of a company, you're always pushing, right? you you want to always do better and, um, you want to do better for your customers. You want to do better for the company to have a competitive advantage and have less problems for everybody all the stakeholders, you know, and meaning the customer is number one stakeholder and the employees and so forth. So, um, you know, there's, there's always, uh, problems. There's always improvements to be made and, you know, you can't be satisfied. You know, if you're, if you're ever satisfied, then you, you're not growing anymore. You have no incentive to grow. You say, Hey, everything's fine the way it is, you know? So, so yeah, so, you know, it all feels like a setback when perfection is what you're chasing, you know, and, uh, and you never actually get there. Mm -hmm. I think Bill actually showed me a quote that you had about, uh, not everything has to be perfect. It just has to be done. You had it on the desk over there, right? Yes. Yep. Um, so obviously your company now you have a ton of employees, but you obviously started off as a small time person at one point. Um, how many employees did you originally start with and where are you guys now? Well, uh, let's see. I mean, obviously we started with, you know, me and, and, a, and, a, and a partner at the time. Uh, and today we have, uh, we have 400 employees in, in Connecticut. We have uh, our, our dealers in total have uh, probably 10,000 employees uh, and, uh, we actually write about 1000 paychecks a week, wow. uh, between the, uh, dealers that we partner with, or we, we have, uh, operations in places like Knoxville and Buffalo and Winston Salem and, and Indianapolis and all over the place that, uh, we, we, we have our direct employees. That's pretty impressive. Um, if you had to start your company over. Uh, would you do any things differently? Well, you know, y- you couldn't uh, based on what you knew. You know, you're always doing your best based on the information and experience that you have at the time. So, yeah, would you like to do something different? Uh, yeah, I'd like to do it right the first time <laughs> instead of taking 30 years of iteration. But, you know, um, you don't have that opportunity. And, you know, I mean, hopefully – I'm not as smart now as I will be, you know, 10 years from now, you know, that we would know how to do things better, you know? Uh, So it's a journey, right? And, and it's uh, really a a journey of uh, personal development. Okay. Um, 
So how did you prepare yourself for all the skills and things that you've learned? How did you prepare yourself to be in the position that you are in today? Well, uh, I didn't go to college. Um, I just uh, got out there and started doing things. And then uh, when I was about uh, 18 or 19, I discovered audio training programs, uh, cassette tapes, uh, they were at the time. And uh, I just listened like a madman. I was just, uh, I probably have read or listened to, I don't know how many books in my life, oh, thousands. Uh and, you know, you learn from other people, people who are good at, good at uh, marketing, good at uh, management, good at production, good at psychology, good at uh, selling, good at, um, you know, it, all the skills that it, it takes to, to run a business. So, so, you know, I think uh, when you graduate school, your, your education really continues uh, if those of us that are going to, you know, do anything significant, you, you have to keep learning from other people. Um, so, you know, I wasn't prepared. If mm -hmm. you wait till you're prepared, you're never going to do anything because you never feel like you're, you know, enough. So one of the best ways to learn is by doing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I have, I have uh, three children and, uh, the first two did not go to college. The third one did. And I feel like the third one is behind, <laughs> you know, uh, because, you know, practical experience, you know, is, is, is really how you learn, you know, viscerally and emotionally and you don't forget. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, if you're going to be a doctor, you can't do that with a home study course. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> you gotta, but fortunately I was, a uh, you know, a a, a con a home improvement guy and an entrepreneur. So, um, they don't even teach that stuff in college anyway. <laughs> That's very true. They do not. Um, for someone that was just starting up their own business, what advice would you give those people in today's world? Uh, just, you know, learn. I mean, you know, now with the internet, it's so easy. Uh, you know, I'm almost envious but back in the day, you know, you had to buy a audio program for $60, you know, and it's six, six cassette tapes. Now it's free, you know, yeah. online. And, you know, there's all kinds of experts putting stuff on YouTube and on podcasts. And, and it's so easy to have access to information anywhere you go with your phone. Um, but, you know, I would just say learn, learn, learn and act, 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 you know, take action and, uh, and keep asking questions. Don't, don't ever think you know it all. You know, there's no stupid question. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask because mm -hmm. you're the one that stays dumb, right? The person that asks a question is, is, you know, ignorant for a moment. The person that doesn't is ignorant for a lifetime, you know, so. Um, who's your greatest inspiration? I think that, uh, you know, anybody that's operating at a super high level in any given area. So if you ask me, you know, who's, who's my inspiration in, you know, in sales or in marketing or in uh, management, you know, um, in building science, uh, you know, you get different names. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you have to pull, you know, being an entrepreneur, being a CEO, being a, a leader, you have to know a lot of things, you know, the, the business will never outperform the leader. And there's so many different dimensions to the business. And while you don't have to execute all these things, I mean, you're, you guys are into, you know, technology, and you know how to use software. And I'm like, I'm software is like, you know, my kryptonite, you know, <laughs> I, I don't, uh, it, just because I don't make it a priority, because I, I have people, I just say, hey, can you run that report? Can you tell me this fact or figure? And they just look it up. And I, there's so many different softwares that they're using. You know, all, all my different people have so many different softwares. So I couldn't possibly be an expert in all that. But I have to know enough to be able to ask the right questions and know when, you know, something is being done well and when, you know, it, it's not. Um, so there's a lot of different um, – disciplines if you're going to be an entrepreneur the the business will rise to the level of you know the, the organization's weakest skill mm -hmm. right so if you're not good at marketing you're not going to get leads so you can't sell anything if you if you get leads but you're not good at sales you're not going to sell anything so you, you'll never have the chance to install it 
if you get leads and you can sell, but you can't, you know, install it well, then, you know, that's going to be the limiting factor in the business. Um, so, you know, a, a, a business person just needs to know a lot about the key uh, functions of the business and, you know, what makes it go. So you also created the School of Entrepreneurship, right? Right. Uh, tell us a little about that. So my dealers, you know, need a lot of help. Um, you know, we all need a lot of help, right? Even, you know, leaders. Uh, the funny thing is, you know, oftentimes the leader is looked to be, you know, he should have all the answers, should be the smartest guy in the building. Uh, no one's telling the leader, you know, what to do, mm -hmm. right? The, the employees aren't saying, hey, I started here last week, but you sh you're not doing a very good job at leading. You should do this better. You know, that that's not going to happen, right? So um, the leader needs to be trained, you know, how to be a good leader uh, in and run a good business. So um, we've been training business owners to do so many things for many years, but we've uh, I decided I was just going to really make a, a – sort of university level course and create a school of entrepreneurship that goes on for three and a half years um, online, the online program at the S O E.com. You get a video a day for three and a half years, you know, and you're just, uh, you watch your video every day and you get exposed to, you know, one subject at a time. You know, we start building and building and building on the ideas uh, necessary to get better and better and better. And it's amazing what you can accomplish in, in any given field. You know, I, I've been doing this for 38 years and, uh, uh, you know, you get better every year, you know, so there's a lot to know. Um, you can get started with a lot less training and, but, you know, um, you want to learn what the smartest people in your industry know. And, uh, don't don't let that be a secret be kept a, a secret from you so the school of entrepreneurship is sort of my like my life's work um, all put down on uh, in one one place one course has anyone had success um, after taking your course and gone off and made big corporations like you have oh of course yeah yeah um, there's many stories how uh, companies have, grown i mean there's uh, one i could think of was in business for 12 years doing about half a million dollars in business a year and uh four years later they're doing 18 million that's awesome uh, so uh and, and you know that creates a lot of jobs that means that if that company is doing 18 million that means the public is saying we like you better we like you better than what is offered by other others and therefore they're raising the standard of living for customers right because the customers can get a better service better quality for you know for for the money um and so it's just elevating you know society in general right so successful entrepreneurs are the drivers of a high standard of living um do you have any new projects or companies that you're excited about and want to talk about? Well, we always have new things going on. I love the old stuff, too. Um, we have a roofing dealer network called Klaus Roofing Systems. We have a gutter uh, system called Gutter Shutter that we have a, a dealer network uh, we're building out. Um, and um, uh, But, you know, the, the old stuff, we always seem to, uh, you know, where our, our, our roots are in basement waterproofing <laughs> and crawl spaces and uh, foundation repair. And, uh, you know, we're always finding ways to push it, you know, and, and just make it better and better. So uh, to me, it's all exciting. You know, uh, I wake up every day. I love what I do. Um, could have retired years ago. And my, my daughter asked me, Dad, why don't you retire? And I said, retirement is for people who hate their jobs, <laughs> you know. Uh, so I love my job. And, um, you know, it's how I contribute to the world. And, um, you know, the longer I stay at it, the better I get at it. It gives me a reason to get up in the morning. And, um, you know, I get a great team, get to work. You know, all my friends, you know, not all of them, but many of them, most of them, I would say, are uh, – 
you know, friends from work. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been an adventure and I think, uh, you know, what's better than that when work can, um, you know, give your life meaning and, and, and purpose and also be the channel that you contribute with. Um, so it, it's, it's good. It's, it's all good. Awesome. Do you guys have any other questions? What has been the most rewarding part of your journey so far? Um, well, let's see. Um, you know, I think um, seeing other people succeed um, and and be you know loyal and, and stay with you and grow um, is is really great. Um, seeing what an impact you can make in the community, you know. Um, you know, because successful businesses become institutions in, in the community, right? And so in my town, we're the largest employer and we're the largest taxpayer also. Um, and, you know, you, you in the morning or afternoons, you're driving around and you see my trucks just everywhere from my local service business. Um, um, and I think uh, personal growth, you know, like, you know, not, you've got to challenge yourself and, and grow personally and expand your, uh, your knowledge and your, um, it takes courage to do things for the first time. You know, it's, it's easy to do the same old thing. Um, but I get bored. So, but at the same time, it's, uh, it can be, you know, you get a little anxiety doing something for the first time, but you say, I'm going to master this till I feel really, really good about it and um so there's there's a lot of a lot of rewarding things um and you know you know uh, i think it's a lot of entrepreneurs say well i want to be an entrepreneur to make a lot of money and uh then they find that if they become the kind of person that attracts the money uh that the money wasn't really the goal after all that it was the kind of person you become in pursuit uh, and, and and ultimately succeeding uh, is really you know what the what the juice is. It's like the journey, you know, the personal growth because you know you you can't take it with you, right? So what what do you have? You have relationships, you have uh, experiences and memories, and then the and whatever you know legacy you left behind. So uh, so that's that that kind of you know personal growth is uh, is something that. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of businesses because they, wherever you go in the world, you know, wherever there's a high standard of living, there's businesses everywhere. Wherever there's a low standard of living, you know, like you're, you're looking around, it's like, hey, there's no places for people to work. <laughs> you know, we're missing some businesses here. And it yeah. might be, you know, the uh, freedom is missing. Uh, there's corruption. There's uh, overbearing, you know, government and no property rights. Uh you know, whatever it is, but there's, you know, businesses make the world go round. Let's face it. We all work at one and they all, you know, they pay our salaries, they pay the taxes that ultimately, you know, get used for whatever purposes, good and bad. But, uh, you know, without businesses, we're in trouble. So uh, I'm happy to play uh, a meaningful part in that. Good. Um, All of the dealers in your network are service providers in the home improvement industry. Um, what is the future outlook looking for service providers in that industry? Oh, it's looking amazing. I mean, uh, houses aren't built well to begin with. And, you know, to be fair to builders, if they were, they would cost three times as much. Um, so houses are sort of disposable, but for people, they're not, right? I mean, if it's your biggest investment in your life is your house and, you know, you don't want it to rot you don't want it to be full of mold you don't want it to settle you don't want it to crack you don't want it to uh you know be unlivable right you want it to be something that you're proud of you want it to look good but all those things are fleeting you know they're these houses are they gonna need repairs and improvements uh continually forever and if you doubt it just drive around your neighborhood and look at a house that you can see nobody cares about, nobody spent any money on in the last, you know, 15 or 20 years and see what it looks like, you know, (laughs) not good, right? So we're going to need home improvement and home repair 
forever and human beings are always going to have to live somewhere and it's not going to be in a cave it's going to be in a you know a home with a concrete uh foundation and a frame you know a, a, a framed uh dwelling on top and uh that's made of organic materials that need to stay dry and um you know it's uh it's home the home home improvement and home repair business will be uh safe as far as the eye could see what are your thoughts on the prices of wood skyrocketing well um you know covid has uh changed the world at least temporarily in a lot of ways one uh reduced the labor force with the government paying people not to work. Um, and then you have, at the same time, they've given out a lot of money to uh, people, and so there's a high demand. So you have limited supply, higher demand, and just something as simple as you know, interruption in shipping or trucking uh, can you know, completely dis- disrupt an industry. Um, so you know, right now we have... You know, and, at the same time, it seems like most people in the world are, are re-scrambling, reshuffling their lives. Like, uh, you know, I used to live here, work there, stop here to eat, stop there to eat, shop over here, and now everybody's changed, you know, their, their habits, right? So I live here, and I, st- I also work here, and the kids also spend a lot of time here. So I'm going to remodel this, abandon that, not go there, go here instead, and, and order stuff online and now all of a sudden we've got to rebuild the entire infrastructure for completely new habits for people so um that creates a huge demand and uh so all of this put together and you have shortages of lumber of you know uh spray foam of chips for cars you know the whole car can't be made because they're missing a chip you know that that runs the car right um your video graphic cards for the computers i know those went like crazy during the pandemic yeah i mean so so many things you know texas had that uh big freeze down there Mm -hmm. turns out most of the spray foam is made in texas you know um you know when the tanker uh the freighter ship went sideways in the Suez Canal well all the shipping from India is you know stopped you know so do you think 1.3 billion people export anything to the United States well hmm. uh, you know so uh, all, all these things put together uh, so I, I think that these things are hopefully temporary although um, I mean I don't know how far deep in the weeds we want to get into economics but um you know, I, I, I'm very concerned about our federal debt um, and and inflation, and typically to control inflation, which is inflation is a very bad thing. It destroys wealth from all of us, including your retirement account and your the value of your home, the buying power of those dollars. But, um, you know, they typically raise interest rates to slow inflation, but now they can't do that because the federal government is, you know, 30 trillion in debt and they would be paying most of the interest that would break the budget. And so what are they going to do now? You know what, like, you know, either we're going to have big inflation or big interest rates. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worrisome. And uh, I think people should, you know, really wake up and say, you know, not what am I going to get out of this, but what are my kids, what world are my kids inheriting, you know, and be concerned about, uh, you know, fiscal responsibility. You know, if you and I spent money like the government did, we'd be arrested, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, you know, we all need to look at that and say, you know, look at the bigger picture instead of the short term, uh, you know, who's going to win the next election because they gave me the most or something. I don't, I'm not sure how people are thinking these days, but, you know, crazy things are happening as far as I'm concerned because, you know, running a, a big company – I'm responsible, right? I have to write a thousand paychecks and I can't print money or borrow it to do it, right? I've got to do the right thing. I I can't spend more money than I have. And that's just a hard 
reality, and it's a good thing because it keeps us sharp. It keeps us making uh, smart, doing smart things, not dumb things. And um, so, you know, it's, um, but nevertheless, people are, you know, I'm an optimist in the end, right? And uh, I believe that we, we can have solutions to problems, but um, better that we stop digging the hole <laughs> than to try to dig it deeper and, and fix it later. Gotcha. All right, last question. What do you think are some of the key attributes of a great leader? Uh, keep learning. Um, you know, so to me, leadership is accomplishing the goal of the organization while bringing out the best in other people. So let me say that again. Accomplish the goals of the organization while bringing out the best in other people. So you can't, you know, burn your relationships, burn your people, chase your people off, just, you know, keep turning over employees. You, you want people to be happy coming to work. You want to see shiny, happy faces every day, people that are energized, not people that are, you know, feel like they're being used, uh, you know. So, you know, working for the man, if you will, you know, kind of thing, you know. So, um, so you know, you, you need humility. You need uh, to have a sense of humor. You uh, need to face the hard uh, decisions. Um, and, you know, at the same time, you know, you got to bring out the best qualities in other people. Don't expect everybody to be the same because they're not. Everybody has different talents and different personality styles and put the right people in the right seats. Um, and to build other leaders, you know, um, some leaders come at it like the more followers I have, the more powerful of a leader I am, but really it's the more leaders you can develop, the easier your job gets and uh, the more the company you know, can accomplish because you have a lot, a lot more people who are really empowered. You know, whether you, whether your title says you're a leader or a manager or not, you want to empower other people to give their best and to do their best and give them responsibility, you know, pin a badge on their chest and say, you are responsible for this part of the business. We trust you and you have the talent and skill to, you know, to be able to uh, handle this and we're counting on you. And people say, wow, they're counting on me. They trust me. And, they, you know, put me in the right spot and wow, I'm going to give my best because, you know, I'm at the right place. And if everybody feels that way, wow, that that's amazing. All right. Um, Larry, where can people find or reach you at? So Larry Uh, you can sign up for my daily blog at thinkdaily.com. I've been writing a, a blog very short message of the day for uh, 12 years now. Uh, and I do another one called Think Daily for Business People. So there's really two uh, messages per day every weekday, not the weekends, uh, that I've been writing for 12 years. And there's about 25,000 people that get them. Uh, so you can sign up free, and I'll never share your email address, thinkdaily.com. I also have um, a business book called The Highest Calling. Um, that uh, anybody in business will absolutely love because it's about you. Um, and you can see a bunch of my work on uh, YouTube. Um, one of the things I like to do for fun is race uh, motorcycles in the desert, long distance, like the longest nonstop cross-country race in the world, the Baja 1000. And uh, I've, I've done it solo with uh, and uh, done it with my son. So those movies, uh, there's Into the Dust, into the dust two, three, and soon to be four, that are, are very, very popular movies on on YouTube, like four million views. But um, you can see those on YouTube. There's all kinds of content if you just uh, search my name on any platform. Larry, thank you very much for coming. Uh, we re really appreciate you answering our questions and taking your time and coming down and visiting us. Thanks for having me. And everybody, go to thinkdaily.com and and sign up for Think Daily. It's my uh, my daily uh, message of the day and uh, 25,000 people get it every day. And uh, I'll never share your email address because uh, I hate when people do that to <laughs> me. So, uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.